Hello friends, India has demonstrated with Chandrayaan 3 what no other country has done before. A touchdown on the south pole of the moon. The entire world celebrated this success. It was not only India's first successful landing on the moon, but they also accomplished it within a very low budget. The total cost of the mission was only $75 million. China spent less than half of what they spent on their lunar rover. In recent years, space agencies from around the world have been racing to reach the southern pole of the moon. It is estimated that there is ice just below the surface in this part of the moon, which could be used for drinking water and rocket fuel. On September 2nd, 2023, ISRO tweeted that the Pragyan rover has completed all its assignments and lunar night is approaching. Therefore, the Vikram lander and rover were set to sleep mode on September 3rd. However, being in sleep mode does not mean the mission has ended. In history, it has been observed several times that a rover or lander was put into sleep mode due to the harsh lunar conditions, but equipment has been reactivated despite being inactive for weeks. Our Chandrayaan, if it's in sleep mode today, doesn't mean it can't be reactivated. An attempt was recently made to reactivate this operation, but what was the result? But did you know that during the Pragyan rover's mission, it discovered oxygen and sulfur on the moon? Very few people have discussed the new findings during Chandrayaan 3's experiments. But these discoveries are truly fascinating. Let's learn and understand more about them in today's video. Look, friends, there is no doubt in this matter that Chandrayaan 3 was a great success for India as a mission, which conducted numerous studies on the moon. As soon as Chandrayaan 3 landed on the surface, it left the rover, and it immediately started rotating so that its solar panels faced the sun. This solar array generates only 50 watts of electricity, which is sufficient to move the rover at a speed of about 1 centimeter per second. The rover has no way to send its data directly to Earth, so it sends it back to the lander through a small antenna. From there, the data is sent to the orbiter, and then back to Earth. This is why the rover has to stay within 500 meters. The rover also succeeded in avoiding falling into pits or getting stuck on rocks, thanks to its design and obstacle avoidance system. In addition to this, it had a camera and a laser-induced breakdown spectroscopy LIBS instrument, which allowed it to take images and analyze the chemical composition of rocks and soil. The temperature difference between the upper and lower surfaces of the moon's south pole which can indicate the presence of water ice, was measured by the orbiter's infrared spectrometer. It found that it varied from minus 11 to 156 degrees Celsius, depending on the time of day and the angle of sunlight. However, the lander's thermal probe measured the surface temperature at a depth of 10 centimeters and found it to be very low, around minus 183 degrees Celsius. This suggests that there is an insulating layer between the surface and subsurface, possibly due to water ice, which can exist in permanently shaded regions of the moon's south pole, where sunlight never reaches. However, Chandrayaan-3 has shown that water ice could also be present in those areas where some sunlight reaches. Chandrayaan-3 couldn't utilize the full lunar day of 14 days because, firstly, its landing occurred one day after the start of the lunar day, and secondly, there were several complications during that time that affected minor optics for Chandrayaan-3. Chandrayaan-3 continued to study the lunar surface for about 12 days, and in such a short time, it achieved many milestones that other countries couldn't. For example, within approximately 10 days, the Pragyan rover covered a distance of over 100 meters, whereas other space missions that spent six months on the moon covered distances of 100 to 120 meters. You can clearly see that Pragyan Rover has set a speed record of its own compared to others. Additionally, on August 26, 2023, the Instrument for Lunar Seismic Activity installed in the Vikram lander detected a natural moonquake, marking the first seismic activity detected on the moon since the 1970s. Furthermore, Chandrayaan has also discovered sulfur and various other elements on the moon's surface which is expected to provide us with a clearer idea of the moon's origin. What's truly astonishing is that all of this was achieved and sent back to Earth by our equipment within just 10 days. This is why global organizations, like the First Post, consider Chandrayaan a true engineering marvel. However, as with all good things, there are setbacks. Similarly, 
As soon as Vikram and Pragyan reached the lunar night, they had to be put into sleep mode, during which time both of their functions were completely halted. Despite sending the reactivation signal to Chandrayaan-3 on September 22, 2023, even after two weeks, ISRO has not been able to establish any communication with Chandrayaan-3. ISRO's Director of Space Application Center, Nilesh Desai and ISRO Chairman S. Somanath had clarified that the chances of its reactivation were only 50-50. In this situation, the question arises before us. Should we all abandon our hopes connected with this mission? What mistake did ISRO make that they cannot reactivate Chandrayaan-3? And what will happen to our Vikram and Pragyan lying on the moon's surface if they cannot reactivate it? In reality, ISRO used solar power batteries for its mission, which could only withstand temperatures as low as minus 180 degrees Celsius. During lunar night, the temperature on the moon drops to around minus 240 degrees Celsius. Now, when Vikram and Pragyan were put in sleep mode, it was naturally impossible to maintain their temperature without electricity. In such low temperatures, the liquid filled in the battery, which we call electrolyte, would freeze. Obviously, when the chance particles freeze, their flow will also stop, and they won't collide to react with each other. Scientists say that they should have used the radioisotope heater unit, RHU, which is a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, instead of this device. Before putting Chandrayaan-3 into sleep mode, scientists kept both Vikram and Pragyan's receivers turned on. They hoped to establish communication with them about 14 days later. That's why ISRO made its first attempt to revive the Chandrayaan-3 mission on September 20th, 2023. Chandrayaan-3 was not programmed for a second lunar day, but there was hope that they might survive. If the night survives, we might be able to continue this mission. This raises the question of whether there was a device that could have kept Chandrayaan-3 alive during the lunar night. ISRO officials admit the existence of such devices. So why wasn't this device used in Chandrayaan-3? What mistake was made? Was this device too heavy? Or was there a budget issue? Or was it too complicated to be compatible with Chandrayaan-3? Recently, China's U-2 rover set a record for the longest operating time on the moon, traveling 1.455 kilometers as part of China's fourth lunar mission. Surprisingly, it was discovered that this rover was equipped with an RTG, radioisotope thermoelectric generator, a technology developed almost 200 years ago in 1821. This technology involves generating electricity by heating one end and keeping the other end cold, a concept known as the Seebeck effect. These devices, called thermocouples, were used to create RTGs. NASA has been using RTGs since its Apollo missions, and many space agencies, including China's CNSA, have incorporated them into their spacecraft. Even China's Chang'e 3 and Chang'e 4 missions featured RTGs. If an RTG had been included in India's Chandrayaan 3 mission, it could have been a game changer for keeping the Vikram and Pragyan landers operational during the lunar night. The challenge is to heat the landers in the absence of the sun's warmth. To address this challenge, scientists developed a special type of thermocouple. These thermocouples are arranged in a circular pattern, with a radioactive plutonium source placed between them. This source provides heat to the thermocouples from the inner side only. The choice of materials for these thermocouples is crucial, given the harsh conditions of outer space. Instead of using regular metals, scientists used access negative charge and access positive charge semiconductors in the next generation thermocouples. When one end of the thermocouple gets hot due to plutonium decay, the charge particles in the semiconductors vibrate rapidly, creating a strong current flow. This current flow provides heat and power to the spacecraft and its instruments, a process known as freeze-in short. While this device is relatively simple, it contains a radioactive component. To control this radioactivity, certain adjustments had to be made to the instrument. An entire RTG weighs around 35 kilograms, whereas ISRO's rover weighs only 26 kilograms, making it impossible to fit the RTG into ISRO's rover. The objectives of ISRO's Chandrayaan-3 mission were different from China's lunar missions. ISRO aimed to achieve three objectives, ensure a safe landing for the Vikram lander, demonstrate the capabilities of the Pragyan rover, and conduct scientific experiments on the moon's south pole. While the first two objectives were straightforward, ISRO only mentioned conducting experiments without specifying the use of an RTG. 
The Chandrayaan-3 has landed on the south pole of the moon, which is a completely unexplored territory, while China's rovers are not placing themselves at the moon's south pole. Now, in the scientific community, any researcher who takes the first step on any unexplored location conducts an experiment just to gather preliminary information about that place. Then, when someone else returns to that location, they come with certain expectations based on the previous exploration. They conduct experiments to verify it, for example. Now that Chandrayaan-3 has seen that it is on the south polar surface of the moon, future missions will go there. They will attempt to detect and prove the activity there because sulfur mostly comes to the surface through activity. Anyway, if you still think that Chandrayaan-3 is in, it was an extraordinary search, like finding free-flowing water or its remnants from the early times on the moon. ISRO already has a backup plan for this called Chandrayaan-4, in which they are collaborating with Japan's space agency, JAXA. If you like this video, I have created a playlist of videos related to space. You can click here to watch it. It contains several videos, such as one on black holes where I explain the mysteries of black holes. You can click here to watch it. Thank you very much.